there comes a time when you're dealing with a narcissist where you have to make a really crucial decision. And it comes down to this. It's them or it's me because we cannot coexist. This is the vital moment in your life where you decide it's you. You matter and you are more important. It's easier to initially make this choice, but when you're dealing with a narcissist, for many reasons, it's hard to stick to this kind of conviction. So we're going to talk about healthy decisions, what they are, why you need to be making them, and most importantly, how you stick to them. Welcome back. My name is Jess. If this is your first time here and you want to learn about narcissistic abuse, start now by subscribing and make sure you ring the notification bell to get notified about all my content so you don't miss anything. For a one-on-one -on -one phone session with me, you can email bookachatwithjess at gmail.com for rates and appointment times. You can also join the Survivor's Army if you want bonus content or season two of my motivational pep talks for survivors that is out now. If you join at the fighter level, you get a video every Wednesday. All the details are down in the video description. There is a link for you. Also, don't forget, I do Q&A live streams every Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern right here on YouTube. Healthy decisions. That sounds super good in theory, doesn't it? I'm going to block them. I'm going to stay no contact and I'm going to focus on me. Sometimes, well, <laughs> most of the time, <laughs> this is pretty much easier said than done. Flat out. I'm not the sugar coaty kind of girl. If this was easy, I'd have a different job and I wouldn't have had this issue myself in the first place. So Let's run through a list of healthy decisions that we need to make to break our addiction to a narcissist and the push and pull of a toxic, abusive relationship. This is all about making decisions that only support you and your self-care, which is literally the only thing you should be worried about when you are breaking away from a toxic person. Number one, you need to be no contact or have as little contact with them as you possibly can. I have a playlist all about this. I will throw it on the screen at the end of the video. It's also in my playlists. I have several of them. You can check them out when you're poking around on my channel. But no contact is what has to be done here. The narcissist needs as little access to you as possible. Not only that, you need time away for the fog from gaslighting to kind of fade away. Lots of times we can't even see how bad of a situation we're in because we're so close to it. We are so gaslighted. We are so brainwashed. And when we go no contact and we step back and everything calms down, only then do we go, wow, this is actually a lot worse than I thought it was. Sticking to this is obviously a difficult thing to master. You can't creep the social media. You can't answer texts and phone calls. But here's something to always keep in mind when you're thinking about no contact. What is going to change if you do? What is going to change if you look at the social media? What's going to change if you answer the phone? That's what I always went back to in my mind. Are they actually going to be any different? No. And you know this for a fact if you've been hoovered because this shit never goes well, does it? Mine certainly didn't. These people leave and discard and find somebody else literally because they don't want to change. They silent treatment you to punish you, to make you change. They do things and tell you that you're the problem so that you will change and not them. Again, my playlist on no contact will help you if you're struggling here. Number two, understand that you have a lot of healing to do, and this process is not a short one. The program that I work through with a lot of my clients in a one-on-one -on -one capacity goes through things like grieving, trauma bonding, finalizing the relationship with the narcissist, and only then does the work on them actually begin with boundary building, self-esteem boosting standards, and healing, venting, and all that kind of stuff. Know that this takes time, but it's worth it in the end because you will come through this an even more amazing person than ever before. Number three, this is a big one. You have to learn how to exercise constructive compassion. In other words, this is a really kind of nice way of saying that negative self-talk has really got to go. I've spoken about this in some of my other videos, but it's more true than ever. Our attitude towards ourselves during this time hinders the hell out of our grieving and our healing. 
I have a post on my Instagram that says, you don't want them to treat you like shit. So why are you treating yourself like shit? I mean, that really says it all, doesn't it? So don't do that. Why are you punishing yourself? You know, the same old you should have known better bullshit. What, you know, who says you should have known better? Okay, maybe you should have. Hell, maybe I should have. All of this is coming from the voice of a survivor. I'm going to bring you back to the right now, to the so the fuck what? Okay, I'll use myself as an example because I'm kind of the best person I know. I should have known better, but I did what I did. How in the hell long am I supposed to punish myself about it? Punish myself forever, but I'm never going to get any better if I do that. I wanted to get better, but we're going to get to that in a second. Constructive compassion takes all of that negative self-talk out. And instead of saying things like, you know, you should have known better, you're going to tell yourself, I made a bad choice, but I'm going to fix what it was that led me to making those bad choices. I do accept responsibility for what I did, but now I'm going to fix it. I am not going to linger on this and I'm going to move forward. The negative self-talk really keeps you down in a bad spot. You get stuck. So be understanding towards yourself and reflect back on things. Asking why is always a good thing that you can do. And journaling is a really good way to do that too. Number four, you really have to forgive yourself. See, I told you we'd get there. You have to let it go. And I don't mean in that shitty get over it kind of way. I mean, you literally have to let it go. You have to let go of how you feel about yourself in this situation because it's done. Literally, what's done is done. You can't spend forever hating yourself, which is highly unnecessary. You know, you can do that or a <laughs> different, different idea. You can say yes. I did this, I made mistakes, I gave up things, I made bad choices, but I'm telling myself that it's okay. I'm going to make it all right, and I'm going to let it go now. I'm setting it free, and I'm choosing to go now in a different direction. There's always a choice to be made when it comes to dealing with all this, a healthy one and an unhealthy one, to answer the text or to block to, you know, give in and reach out or to stay vigilant and stay no contact, things like that. The key here is knowing that you're making the right choices. You never have to worry in this case if you're making the right choice. If the choice is something that deep down you know is what is best for you and your self-care and your sanity and your soul, there's really nothing left to chance here. And there's nothing left to think about because things with a toxic person never get better. They're gone now. This is about you making good decisions and being compassionate towards yourself. Kindness is key. So, you know, the way that we've come through all of this, we're going to get rid of that fantasy. That was the first thing we talked about. We're going to get rid of that extremist way of thinking. And now we're going to start forgiving ourselves and being kind to ourselves. A really crucial thing to keep in mind here is also this. If you do break no contact, I of course don't condone it, but if you do, if you do go against it, always go back to being kind to yourself. Don't beat yourself up over anything. We are human and we make mistakes. And this is something that you're teaching yourself. You are going to break the bond from this person, but this is one of those things that transforms you into a whole new person. If you falter, you can just start over again. We all screw up. We all make mistakes. Make healing a priority in your life. Make a commitment that you don't want to be stuck here listening to me drone on forever and ever, if nothing else. How quickly do you want that part over with? <laughs> Make choices that only serve you, that only serve your best interest. And if you stick to that, I think you will find that the narcissist has very little room in your life to bother you. So tell me down in the comments what decisions that you make that are just for you. How are you taking care of yourself? I will toss some of my playlists on the screen for you. I have like a dozen others on my channel. Like I say, poke around and binge. Please like and share the video. Subscribe if you haven't. Have a great day, Survivor, and take care of yourself.